Hello and welcome to the lecture on the paired t-test which is kind of similar to a two sample t-test but really is more like a one sample t-test just depends on how you you display the data uh, this corresponds to section 8.3 in the book so if you want to read up on a little bit more or see some more examples you can look there so when you do a two sample t-test one of the assumptions we have is that you have independent data and really what independent data data means is that whenever you measure or collect one of the samples it really has no effect on what you get in the second sample or how you measure the second sample they're two independent entities maybe they're two completely distinct populations or you sample you used to take a random sample from all the males of the population and all the females of the population there you have independent data now if you have independent data you do a two sample t-test or an analysis of variance but sometimes you do not have independent data. Sometimes you get dependent data um, when the samples, somehow the samples are related. For example, um, if you're interested in males and females but you're only allowed to measure couples, then the data is dependent because the fact that a data is a couple might have some influence on the data. Um, so if you only measured married couples and measured the ma males and the females of each couple, that would be a violation of independence. So you have to have a test that deals with dependent data one special case of dependent data is called paired data and as the name implies the data has to come in pairs and that means that two measurements are made on the same individual for example you might make a measurement before you apply a treatment and then after so before a drug is taken or before an exercise program is taken and then after that is over um, that's a that's an example of, a, of uh, measuring the same individual or you might measure pairs of similar individuals like married couples or fathers and sons or very similar things um, there's one question on the homework that looks at cows that have the same um, genetic background and so they group and pair those together because they're the way they respond to a treatment is assumed to be very similar to each other so they pair them like that so if the individuals are linked in some way then you have pairs of individuals so you have paired data so an example we're going to use is a drug example to see if it um, is effective at losing weight and so they took nine women and we're going to measure each woman twice okay um, they're going to take the drug for two separate weeks um, and you can assume that there's a lot of time between the t time they take the two drugs and so you don't even have to assume that they're in the right in the same order all the time so maybe some of the women get the placebo in week one and then some women get the drug and then in the next week which happens a month later they flip it around but the point is you measure how much weight is lost during the during one week with the drug and then how much weight is lost during the week with the placebo and we want to see if the drug is effective for losing weight so here's an example of the data and you can see here now we have weight loss in pounds and if it's positive that means they lost weight so subject one lost 1.1 pounds during that week when they when she took the drug whereas she didn't lose any weight when she lost the placebo subject two lost 1.3 pounds um, when they took the drug but gained 0.3 pounds when they lost the placebo or when they took the placebo uh, subject nine gained weight both times gained 0.5 pounds in the drug and gained 0.2 pound, pounds when they were taking the placebo so again it's all relative um, it depends upon the pair patient nine or subject nine was always gaining weight while as some of the other subjects always lost weight but you can see the rate is different depending upon whether you're taking the drug or the placebo in most cases uh, subject seven seemed to lo lose weight in fact lost more weight for the placebo so it all depends but the point is the data is paired and so we have to take that into account so the research question is does the drug do a better job than the placebo in terms of weight loss so we're going to do a hypothesis test to go ahead and test that um, some things to consider so again in this example a positive number indicates the weight loss the negative number is weight gain the data is not independent as the same subject was measured twice and really the amount of weight loss is not important only the difference between the drug and the placebo it didn't matter if someone lost 20 pounds on the drug and then 19 pounds on the placebo all that matters is that the difference between the two was one and so that's really what we're looking at the difference not the absolute value of the of the of the weight loss but the difference between the drug and the placebo and so the solution to this is what's called the paired t-test where you're really interested in the difference between each observation not the two sets of data 
like we would in a two sample t-test but we want to look at the difference so for each pair we calculate the difference and then we conduct a one sample t-test on the differences as opposed to using the two sample t-test formula and so let's show you how this works well little definition let di be the difference between the measurements of each subject or the ith subject let mu d be the mean difference between the two measurements on each subject and then if the mean if mu d if the mean of the difference is zero there is no difference between the two measurements so really what we're doing is we're trying to we're testing the null hypothesis is going to involve mu d equal to zero and ha is going to be not equal to or greater than or less than. That's really what we're looking at here. So in our example, um, we're trying to see the null hypothesis. Um, mu d is less than or equal to zero because the equal effects or the placebo is better and h a mu d is greater than zero. Now how do I know that? Because I've defined the difference to be drug minus placebo. Um, one of the harder things in this test is figuring out what is your alternative hypothesis if it's one-sided. And one example would be to go and to look at a subject. Drug had more weight loss than the placebo. So we actually calculate DI, 1.1 minus 0, it's 1.1, it was positive. So therefore, since that's the drug being better, we're going to make mu D be greater than 0, make mu D positive. So we pick one example that has the, has the condition that we want, and we use that as the example to determine which direction mu D should be positive or negative. Okay? So we define that, then we let alpha equal 0.05, so there's our null alternative hypothesis. Now, for each observation, you need to calculate the difference. So you can see 1.1, 1 1.6, 0 0.4. That is the difference in the weight loss. You see most of these are positive because, again, you can see the drug, they lost more weight, and they gained weight on the placebo. Now, all of them are positive, though. For example, subject 7 lost more weight with the placebo than with the drug, so their value is negative 0.1. But as a whole, they're mostly positive. It's okay to have negative. It's okay to have zero. But again, we're interested in them being positive. So for those nine observations, you just do a hypothesis test on the differences. So 1.1 through 1.5, that's what we're going to do the test on. So you calculate the statistics, the statistics on the difference column. You can ignore everything else at this point. The mean of all the differences is 1.0, the standard deviation is 0.72, and the sample size is 9. Now you just do a one sample t-test with that set of data. Okay, so you calculate the test statistics. It's x bar d, the mean difference, minus the null hypothesis, which is zero all the time, divided by s over the square root of n. You plug in the values, and you get a test statistic of 4.17, just like we did on the homework you handed in before Thanksgiving break. Okay. As with the one sample t-test, the degrees of freedom are n minus 1. So in this case, 8 degrees of freedom. So you go to the um, 8 degrees of freedom table, and you notice that you're off the table to the right. The test statistic is 4.17, which is the biggest value on the table is 3.355. Therefore, your p-value is less than 0 0.005, since we're testing at alpha 0 0.07. We're off the table to the right, so the p-value is very small. Since the p-value is less than alpha, we reject H0. There is enough evidence to suggest that the drug performs better in terms of weight loss than the placebo. There we go. Um, example two, our question is, is there a difference in the sodium content between the plasma of a deer and the milk of a deer? So again, we're looking at female animals here. We're going to we're going to have we're going to sample both the plasma, the blood of a deer, and the milk that the deer is producing. We want to see if there's a difference in the sodium content. Okay. And this, and we're just checking to see if there's a difference. So here, H0 is going to be mu, t, mu D equal to 0. No difference. H A mu D not equal to 0. There is a difference. Even though my notes say drug difference, it's really, there is a difference. Um, there's no drug involved here. Sorry, error of the notes. I'll fix that for the online version. Um, again, we're going to let alpha equal 0.05. So in this case, um, we only have five subjects, and we went and we sampled their sodium content in the plasma and the sodium content in the milk. And here, if you're, if you're actually doing the data, the best way to handle this is literally to open up a spreadsheet and have your data in it. So notice I have one column here, 93, 104, 95. There's the, there's the plasma measurements for the five subjects, and then there's the milk measurements for the five, five subjects. It's really easy. You can just go ahead and define the third column as the difference between the two. Okay. And then you'll copy and paste that down, and then there is our differences. There's our data set. Now, in this particular case, it's a two-sided test. All we want to do is see if there's a difference. We don't really care um, how we define the difference. I always tend to take the first column minus the second column. Then you can use Excel or OpenOffice, and you can calculate the average of the distances. 
it's kind of annoying that they don't have a mean function in spreadsheets. So you have to use the word average, and then you can calculate the standard deviation st dev. That's the sample standard deviation. You calculate that. Okay, and so negative 4.8 and 6.5 our mean standard deviation. We can use that in the hypothesis test. So, go back to the presentation. There's our test statistic again, negative 4.8 minus 0 because again the null hypothesis is always equal to 0 in some fashion. 6.5 divided by the square root of 5. There's our test statistic. Okay. Oops. Um, there are four degrees of freedom because we had five samples and so you, again you can bracket the p-value like we've been doing before. You look in the four degree of freedom row 1.53 and 2.13 bracket 1.65 therefore our p-value is between 0.2 and 0 0.10 again testing at alpha 0 0.05 you would since the p-value is not less than alpha we fail to reject H0 there is not enough evidence to suggest there's a difference between deer plasma and deer milk in terms of sodium levels and again here the key is is that we're looking at individual animals for example species 4 has really low values and species 2 has relatively high values but again I'm not really I don't really care about that I'm only concerned about the difference and that makes the paired t-test okay so again in summary the paired t-test you look at the difference for each pair of data that gives you a third column that is going to be what you do the hypothesis test on those values you can ignore the original values after that there's a homework assignment on the blog where you found this video um, it's basically two questions from the book now the book when they they actually go ahead and calculate the difference and give you the mean and the standard deviation so you don't have to do that that's given for you, you do have to conduct the test um, the questions in the books are poorly worded so I have taken the liberty to actually reword the questions and ask uh, a little bit more salient questions and you'll find those questions in the PDF on the blog and that is the lecture on the paired t-test